Hello, this is Mike Lyler from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to do part 13 of FlexPress with Adobe Flex. And we're going to actually go and finish our custom tileless component. So we're back in our design view. We want to put some content in the view state 2. Now, let me show you when I'm view state 1, I see that content. When I go to view state 2, that's a wholly different state. And I want to actually now bring out a tileless component. So let's drag that out to stage. And we're actually going to stretch that out. We can close the states, for example, just for a moment. And let's stretch this component out. And I already know the kind of sizing I need, so I'm going to source. I'm actually size that automatically by just putting the width in as 800. And I'm going to put the height in as 600. So let's type here to get some code hinting, and let's put a height in there, and let's make that 600. And let's go back to design. And we see we've spread it out a little bit. But it's actually in the wrong place. Or let's, excuse me. Let's go back to design. And let's go to Windows and open up our States panel. And let's go to View 2. And there's our canvas right there. And it is spread across the uh, width of our stage. And that's pretty good. We'll move that over just a little bit. And now what we're going to do is bring in that custom component my tile list component. So let's go back to source view and do that. I no longer need this uh, closing tag here. I'll get rid of that. And as we've done in the past, we've actually closed that just by putting a, a forward slash here. Let's do that now. And so that helps us as far as not needing that closing tag. And I want to go ahead and put my item renderer right here. There's my code hinting. So as we've done for the list box, we have to do the same thing for the uh, tile list component. We want the full name here, so we have to put the package name, which is components. And then we need to put the name of the custom component, which is my tile list, C-O-M-P. Don't need the dot .mxml, and don't need to put this in curly brackets, because that's all being done in the list component. Now one more thing here, this will not work. And the reason it will not work is because this tile list does not have a data provider. So let's go ahead and put the data provider in there. So it's easy when you're typing this stuff to forget uh, these elements. And of course, the code will let you know by not running. And put the data provider in there. What is that data provider? Well, we've created that earlier. That is my WP post. I'm going to go ahead and copy that array collection. And it is bindable, so it needs to be in the, has. It needs to have the bindable curly brackets around it. And paste that in there. And now we're going to put our curly brackets in. And I want to save this code and see if there's any errors. And I don't see any errors, so let's run it and see what we get. So in view one, we get our typical uh, post box and our tile list. We expect that. Let's click on view two. Let's click on view two and see what we get. Hoo hoo! Now this is fairly interesting. What we've done now is we've put all those posts in a tile list container. Isn't that nice? And they're not rendered until I roll over them. Now let's come along here and move over a little bit. And we can see, boy, look at that. Here's my uh, scroll bar, and I can scroll down through those different posts. And watch this. When I roll over them, look, the posts become active. And when I click on them, I can trigger a handler event to actually widen or bring out the entire post to the screen. So this is a new thing that you don't have in WordPress, but you've generated it in Adobe Flex with just you know a few commands. So it's showing you how powerful... Um, Adobe Flex is in working with a database like WordPress and creating some dynamic content. So that's the tile list for you and we'll be moving on from here and showing you how to make this clickable or change handler work when you click on one of these events to make some cool stuff occur.
Well, we've got the tile list working really nice, and you can see as you roll over one, they highlight and they become active. You can click on those, change event handler. So when you click on one of these, the event handler is fired and something happens. But what we want to do now is show you about the horizontal list. So I'm going to take this basically matrix layout here and turn it into a horizontal list. So let's go back to source code. And all we have to do is go to the title list or tile list and change this tile word to horizontal. It's that easy. And let's save that to make sure we don't get any errors. And let's run it. And we're in view one. Let's go to view two. And we do get a horizontal list. You can see that. And our scroll bar is way down here. So what we need to do is go back and just resize that canvas. So go to the design view. And just scroll down here and just basically grab that canvas and bring it up. That's all you have to do. And when it looks like it's about the right size, then you can actually run the program again. And let's see if that does, let's see if that fixes our problem. So let's run the program. We're in view one. Let's go to view two. And there's our scroll bar, our horizontal scroll bar. And you can see as we scroll, we can scroll through all the entries. Now, we've gotten an error here. And I've noticed this error through the program. And basically what it's telling us is as we've rendered a certain item on the stage, that item's uh, syntax is not quite right. So I actually need to go into the database and fix that. I'm going to do that later on in the project. But let's dismiss all and let's continue with this. And so you can see that indeed our scroll bar is working. And notice that error did not come up until I actually rendered that item on the stage. And that's a good thing because that's going to help me find that error. And so when I click on one of these, I can see that it's a button. It becomes activated. And next time we're going to show you how to use that basically change handler to make something happen, like for example the post to get larger and appear in the screen uh, in the next uh, series.